terrorism is, in the broadest sense, the use of intentionally indiscriminate violence as a means to create terror, or fear, to achieve a financial, political, religious, or ideological aim. It is used in this regard primarily to refer to violence against peacetime targets or in war against non-combatants. The terms terrorist and terrorism originated during the French Revolution of the late 18th century but gained mainstream popularity during the U.S. presidency of Ronald Reagan, 1981-89, after the 1983 Beirut barracks bombings and again after the attacks on New York City and Washington. D.C. in September 2001 and on Bali in October 2002. There is no commonly accepted definition of terrorism. Being a charged term, with the connotation of something morally wrong, it is often used, both by governments and non-state groups, to abuse or denounce opposing groups. Broad categories of political organizations have been claimed to have been involved in terrorism to further their objectives including right-wing and left-wing political organizations, nationalist groups, religious groups, revolutionaries, and ruling governments. Terrorism-related legislation has been adopted in various states, regarding terrorism as a crime. There is no universal agreement as to whether or not terrorism, in some definition, should be regarded as a war crime. According to the Global Terrorism Database by the University of Maryland, College Park, more than 61,000 incidents of non-state terrorism, resulting in at least 140,000 deaths, have been recorded from 2000 to 2014. Terminology Origin in French Revolution The Latin verb terrier means, to frighten. The English word terror, just like the French terror, derives from that Latin word and means from of old, fright, alarm, anguish, mortal, fear. Panic. Oxford English Dictionary reportedly states that the word terrorist, French, terrorist, was invented in the year 1794, during the French Revolution. The first meaning of the word terrorist was then, adherent or supporter of the Jacobins. Apparent from the context given in an article in The Guardian, the indication Jacobins in that Oxford definition bears on the group around Maximilien Robespierre, also called Montagnards that after 1794 were held responsible by some commentators for the repressive and violent government over France between June 1793 and July 1794, a period analogously labelled Reign of Terror by commentators. The given definition in Oxford Dictionary shows, the term terrorist in its first use was meant as abusive term for someone's political or historical ideas or allegiances, not as description of his personal actions. In December 1795, Edmund Burke used the word terrorists in a description of the new French government called Directory. At length, after a terrible struggle, the troops prevailed over the citizens, to secure them further, they have a strong corps of irregulars, ready armed. Thousands of those hellhounds called terrorists, whom they had shut up in prison on their last revolution, as the satellites of tyranny, are let loose on the people. Clearly. In this case, Burke used terrorists as disparaging labeling of armed troops hired by a government he loathes. French historian Sophie Wannick, French, distinguishes between the revolutionary terror of the French Revolution and the terrorists of the September 11th attacks. Revolutionary terror is not terrorism. To make a moral equivalence between the revolution's year 2 and September 2001 is historical and philosophical nonsense. The violence exercised on September 11, 2001 aimed neither at equality nor liberty. Nor did the preventive war announced by the President of the United States. Definitions There are over 109 different definitions of terrorism. U.S. American political philosopher Michael Walzer in 2002 wrote, Terrorism is the deliberate killing of innocent people, at random, to spread fear through a whole population and force the hand of its political leaders. This meaning can be traced back to Sergei Nechayev, who described himself as a terrorist. Nechayev founded the Russian terrorist group People's Retribution, in 1869. In November 2004, 
a Secretary General of the United Nations report described terrorism as any act intended to cause death or serious bodily harm to civilians or non-combatants with the purpose of intimidating a population or compelling a government or an international organization to do or abstain from doing any act. Alternatively, Responding to developments in modern warfare, Paul James and Jonathan Friedman distinguish between state terrorism against non-combatants and state terrorism against combatants, including shock and awe tactics. Shock and awe is a subcategory of rapid dominance is the name given to massive intervention designed to strike terror into the minds of the enemy. It is a form of state terrorism. The concept was however developed long before the Second Gulf War by Harlan Ullman as chair of a forum of retired military personnel. But defining terrorism has proven controversial. Various legal systems and government agencies use different definitions of terrorism in their national legislation. Moreover, the international community has been slow to formulate a universally agreed, legally binding definition of this crime. These difficulties arise from the fact that the term terrorism is politically and emotionally charged. In this regard, Angus Martin, briefing the Australian Parliament, stated, The international community has never succeeded in developing an accepted comprehensive definition of terrorism. During the 1970s and 1980s, the United Nations attempts to define the term floundered mainly due to differences of opinion between various members about the use of violence in the context of conflicts over national liberation and self-determination. These divergences have made it impossible for the United Nations to conclude a comprehensive convention on international terrorism that incorporates a single, all-encompassing, legally binding, criminal law definition of terrorism. The international community has adopted a series of sectoral conventions that define and criminalize various types of terrorist activities. Since 1994, the United Nations General Assembly has repeatedly condemned terrorist acts using the following political description of terrorism. Criminal acts intended or calculated to provoke a state of terror in the public, a group of persons or particular persons for political purposes are in any circumstance unjustifiable whatever the considerations of a political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, religious, or any other nature that may be invoked to justify them. U.S. Code Title 22 Chapter 38, Section 2656F, D, defines terrorism as, premeditated, politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by subnational groups or clandestine agents, usually intended to influence an audience. Bruce Hoffman, an American scholar, has noted. It is not only individual agencies within the same governmental apparatus that cannot agree on a single definition of terrorism. Experts and other long-established scholars in the field are equally incapable of reaching a consensus. In the first edition of his magisterial survey, Political Terrorism, a research guide, Alex Schmidt devoted more than a hundred pages to examining more than a hundred different definitions of terrorism in an effort to discover a broadly acceptable, reasonably comprehensive explication of the word. Four years and a second edition later, Schmidt was no closer to the goal of his quest, conceding in the first sentence of the revised volume that the search for an adequate definition is still on. Walter Lequier despaired of defining terrorism in both editions of his monumental work on the subject maintaining that it is neither possible to do so nor worthwhile to make the attempt. Hoffman believes it is possible to identify some key characteristics of terrorism. He proposes that, by distinguishing terrorists from other types of criminals and terrorism from other forms of crime, we come to appreciate that terrorism is ineluctably political in aims and motives. Violent or, equally important, threatens violence designed to have far-reaching psychological repercussions beyond the immediate victim or target. Conducted either by an organization with an identifiable chain of command or conspiratorial cell structure, whose members wear no uniform or identifying insignia, or by individuals or a small collection of individuals directly influenced, motivated, or inspired by the ideological aims or example of some existent terrorist movement and slash or its leaders. And perpetrated by a subnational group or non-state entity. A definition proposed by Karsten Bokstedt at the George C. Marshall European Center for Security Studies, underlines the psychological and tactical aspects of terrorism.
Terrorism is defined as political violence in an asymmetrical conflict that is designed to induce terror and psychic fear, sometimes indiscriminate, through the violent victimization and destruction of non-combatant targets, sometimes iconic symbols. Such acts are meant to send a message from an illicit clandestine organization. The purpose of terrorism is to exploit the media in order to achieve maximum attainable publicity as an amplifying force multiplier in order to influence the targeted audience, s, in order to reach short and midterm political goals and slash or desired long-term end states. Each act of terrorism is a performance device to affect many large audiences. Terrorists also attack national symbols to show power and to attempt to shake the foundation of the country or society they are opposed to. This may negatively affect a government, while increasing the prestige of the given terrorist group and slash or ideology behind a terrorist act. Terrorist acts frequently have a political purpose. This is often where the interrelationship between terrorism and religion occurs. When a political struggle is integrated into the framework of a religious or cosmic struggle, such as over the control of an ancestral homeland or holy site such as Israel and Jerusalem, failing in the political goal, nationalism, becomes equated with spiritual failure, which, for the highly committed, is worse than their own death or the deaths of innocent civilians. Their suffering accomplishes the terrorists' goals of instilling fear, getting their message out to an audience or otherwise satisfying the demands of their often radical religious and political agendas. Some official, Governmental definitions of terrorism use the criterion of the illegitimacy or unlawfulness of the act. To distinguish between actions authorized by a government, and thus lawful, and those of other actors, including individuals and small groups. For example, carrying out a strategic bombing on an enemy city, which is designed to affect civilian support for a cause, would not be considered terrorism if it were authorized by a government. This criterion is inherently problematic and is not universally accepted, because, it denies the existence of state terrorism, the same act may or may not be classed as terrorism depending on whether its sponsorship is traced to a legitimate government, legitimacy and lawfulness are subjective, depending on the perspective of one government or another, and it diverges from the historically accepted meaning and origin of the term. According to Ali Khan, the distinction lies ultimately in a political judgment. An associated, and arguably more easily definable, but not equivalent term is violent non-state actor. The semantic scope of this term includes not only terrorists, but while excluding some individuals or groups who have previously been described as terrorists, and also explicitly excludes state terrorism. U.S. President Barack Obama, commenting on the Boston Marathon bombings of April 2013, declared that natime bombs are used to target innocent civilians, it is an act of terror. Various commentators have pointed out the distinction between act of terror and terrorism, particularly when used by the White House. 18 U.S.C. 2331 defines international terrorism and domestic terrorism for purposes of Chapter 113b of the Code, entitled Terrorism. International terrorism means activities with the following three characteristics. Involve violent acts or acts dangerous to human life that violate federal or state law, appear to be intended, i, to intimidate or coerce a civilian population, 2, to influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion, or, 3, to affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping and occur primarily outside the territorial jurisdiction of the U.S., or transcend national boundaries in terms of the means by which they are accomplished, they persons they appear intended to intimidate or coerce, or the locale in which their perpetrators operate or seek asylum. Pejorative use Having the moral charge in our vocabulary of something morally wrong, the term terrorism is often used to abuse or denounce opposite parties, either governments or non-state groups. Those labeled terrorists by their opponents rarely identify themselves as such, and typically use other terms or terms specific to their situation, such as separatist, freedom fighter, liberator, revolutionary, vigilante, militant, paramilitary, guerrilla, rebel, patriot, or any similar meaning word in other languages and cultures.
Jihadi, Mujahedin, and Fideyin are similar Arabic words that have entered the English lexicon. It is common for both parties in a conflict to describe each other as terrorists. On whether particular terrorist acts, such as killing non-combatants, can be justified as the lesser evil in a particular circumstance, philosophers have expressed different views, while, according to David Rodin, utilitarian philosophers can, in theory, conceive of cases in which the evil of terrorism is outweighed by the good that could not be achieved in a less morally costly way, in practice the harmful effects of undermining the convention of non-combatant immunity is thought to outweigh the goods that may be achieved by particular acts of terrorism. Among the non-utilitarian philosophers, Michael Walzer argued that terrorism can be morally justified in only one specific case, when a nation or community faces the extreme threat of complete destruction and the only way it can preserve itself is by intentionally targeting non-combatants, then it is morally entitled to do so. In his book Inside Terrorism Bruce Hoffman offered an explanation of why the term terrorism becomes distorted. On one point, at least, everyone agrees, terrorism is a pejorative term. It is a word with intrinsically negative connotations that is generally applied to one's enemies and opponents, or to those with whom one disagrees and would otherwise prefer to ignore. What is called terrorism, Brian Jenkins has written, thus seems to depend on one's point of view. Use of the term implies a moral judgment, and if one party can successfully attach the label terrorist to its opponent, then it has indirectly persuaded others to adopt its moral viewpoint. Hence the decision to call someone or label some organization terrorist becomes almost unavoidably subjective, depending largely on whether one sympathizes with or opposes the person slash group slash cause concerned. If one identifies with the victim of the violence, for example, then the act is terrorism. If, however, one identifies with the perpetrator, the violent act is regarded in a more sympathetic, if not positive, or, at the worst, an ambivalent, light, and it is not terrorism. The pejorative connotations of the word can be summed up in the aphorism, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. This is exemplified when a group using irregular military methods is an ally of a state against a mutual enemy, but later falls out with the state and starts to use those methods against its former ally. During World War II, the Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Army was allied with the British, but during the Malayan Emergency, members of its successor, the Malayan Races Liberation Army, were branded terrorists by the British. More recently, Ronald Reagan and others in the American administration frequently called the Mujahedin freedom fighters during the Soviet-Afghan War yet 20 years later when a new generation of Afghan men were fighting against what they perceived to be a regime installed by foreign powers, their attacks were labeled terrorism by George W. Bush. Groups accused of terrorism understandably prefer terms reflecting legitimate military or ideological action. Leading terrorism researcher Professor Martin Rudner, director of the Canadian Centre of Intelligence and Security Studies at Ottawa's Carleton University, defines terrorist acts as unlawful attacks for political or other ideological goals, and said. There is the famous statement, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. But that is grossly misleading. It assesses the validity of the cause when terrorism is an act. One can have a perfectly beautiful cause and yet if one commits terrorist acts, it is terrorism regardless. Some groups, when involved in a liberation struggle, have been called terrorists by the Western governments or media. Later, these same persons, as leaders of the liberated nations, are called statesmen by similar organizations. Two examples of this phenomenon are the Nobel Peace Prize laureates Menachem Begin and Nelson Mandela. WikiLeaks editor Julian Assange has been called a terrorist by Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. Sometimes, states that are close allies, for reasons of history, culture, and politics, can disagree over whether or not members of a certain organization are terrorists. For instance, for many years, some branches of the United States government refused to label members of the Provisional Irish Republican Army, IRA, as terrorists while the IRA was using methods against one of the United States' closest allies, the United Kingdom, that the UK branded as terrorism. This was highlighted by the Quinn v. Robinson case. 
media outlets who wish to convey impartiality may limit their usage of terrorist and terrorism because they are loosely defined, potentially controversial in nature, and subjective terms. History Depending on how broadly the term is defined, the roots and practice of terrorism can be traced at least to the 1st century AD. Sicarii Zealots, though some dispute whether the group, a radical offshoot of the Zealots which was active in Dudia province at the beginning of the 1st century AD, was in fact terrorist. According to the contemporary Jewish Roman historian Josephus, after the Zealotry rebellion against Roman rule in Judea, when some prominent Jewish collaborators with Roman rule were killed, Judas of Galilee formed a small and more extreme offshoot of the Zealots, the Sicarii, in 6 AD. Their terror was also directed against Jewish collaborators, including temple priests, Sadducees, Herodians, and other wealthy elites. The term terrorism itself was originally used to describe the actions of the Jacobin Club during the Reign of Terror in the French Revolution. Terror is nothing other than justice, prompt, severe, inflexible, said Jacobin leader Maximilien Robespierre. In 1795, Edmund Burke denounced the Jacobins for letting thousands of those hellhounds called terrorists, loose on the people of France. In January 1858, Italian patriot Felice Orsini threw three bombs in an attempt to assassinate French Emperor Napoleon III. Eight bystanders were killed and 142 injured. The incident played a crucial role as an inspiration for the development of the early terrorist groups. Arguably the first organization to utilize modern terrorist techniques was the Irish Republican Brotherhood, founded in 1858 as a revolutionary Irish nationalist group that carried out attacks in England. The group initiated the Fenian Dynamite Campaign in 1881, one of the first modern terror campaigns. Instead of earlier forms of terrorism based on political assassination, this campaign used modern, timed explosives with the express aim of sowing fear in the very heart of metropolitan Britain, in order to achieve political gains. Another early terrorist group was Narodnaya Volya, founded in Russia in 1878 as a revolutionary anarchist group inspired by Sergei Nechayev and propaganda by the deed theorist Carlo Pizacane. The group developed ideas such as targeted killing of the leaders of oppression that were to become the hallmark of subsequent violence by small non-state groups, and they were convinced that the developing technologies of the age such as the invention of dynamite, which they were the first anarchist group to make widespread use of enabled them to strike directly and with discrimination. Scholars of terrorism refer to four major waves of global terrorism, the anarchist, the anti-colonial, the new left, and the religious. The first three have been completed and lasted around 40 years, the fourth is now in its third decade. Infographics Types Depending on the country, the political system, and the time in history, the types of terrorism are varying. In early 1975, the Law Enforcement Assistant Administration in the United States formed the National Advisory Committee on Criminal Justice Standards and Goals. One of the five volumes that the committee wrote was titled Disorders and Terrorism, produced by the Task Force on Disorders and Terrorism under the direction of H.H.A. H. A. Cooper, director of the Task Force staff. The Task Force defines terrorism as a tactic or technique by means of which a violent act or the threat thereof is used for the prime purpose of creating overwhelming fear for coercive purposes. It classified disorders and terrorism into six categories. Civil disorder a form of collective violence interfering with the peace, security, and normal functioning of the community. Political terrorism violent criminal behavior designed primarily to generate fear in the community, or substantial segment of it, for political purposes. Non-political terrorism terrorism that is not aimed at political purposes but which exhibits conscious design to create and maintain a high degree of fear for coercive purposes but the end is individual or collective gain rather than the achievement of a political objective. Quasi-terrorism the activities incidental to the commission of crimes of violence that are similar in form and method to genuine terrorism but which nevertheless lack its essential ingredient. It is not the main purpose of the quasi-terrorists to induce terror in the immediate victim as in the case of genuine terrorism, 
but the quasi-terrorist uses the modalities and techniques of the genuine terrorist and produces similar consequences and reaction. For example, the fleeing felon who takes hostages is a quasi-terrorist, whose methods are similar to those of the genuine terrorist but whose purposes are quite different. Limited political terrorism Genuine political terrorism is characterized by a revolutionary approach. Limited political terrorism refers to acts of terrorism which are committed for ideological or political motives but which are not part of a concerted campaign to capture control of the state. Official or state terrorism referring to nations whose rule is based upon fear and oppression that reach similar to terrorism or such proportions. It may also be referred to as structural terrorism defined broadly as terrorist acts carried out by governments in pursuit of political objectives, often as part of their foreign policy. Other sources have defined the typology of terrorism in different ways, for example, broadly classifying it into domestic terrorism and international terrorism, or using categories such as vigilante terrorism or insurgent terrorism. One way the typology of terrorism may be defined. Political terrorism. Substate terrorism. Social revolutionary terrorism. Nationalist separatist terrorism. Religious extremist terrorism. Religious fundamentalist terrorism. New religions terrorism. Right wing terrorism. Left wing terrorism. State sponsored terrorism. Regime or state terrorism. Criminal terrorism. Pathological terrorism. Motivations of terrorists. Attacks on collaborators are used to intimidate people from cooperating with the state in order to undermine state control. This strategy was used in Ireland, in Kenya, in Algeria, and in Cyprus during their independence struggles. Attacks on high profile symbolic targets are used to incite counter terrorism by the state to polarize the population. This strategy was used by Al Qaeda in its attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon in the United States on September 11, 2001. These attacks are also used to draw international attention to struggles that are otherwise unreported, such as the Palestinian airplane hijackings in 1970 and the South Moluccan hostage crisis in the Netherlands in 1975. Abram suggests that terrorist organizations do not select terrorism for its political effectiveness. Individual terrorists tend to be motivated more by a desire for social solidarity with other members of their organization than by political platforms or strategic objectives, which are often murky and undefined. Additionally, Michael Musso shows possible relationships between the type of economy within a country and ideology associated with terrorism. Many terrorists have a history of domestic violence. Some terrorists like Timothy McVeigh were motivated by revenge against a state for its actions against its citizens. According to Paul Gill, John Horgan, and Paige Deckard on behalf of the Department of Security of UK, 43% of lone wolf terrorism is motivated by religious beliefs. The same report indicates that just less than a third, 31.9%, have pre-existing mental health disorders, while many are found to have these problems upon arrest. At least 37% lived alone at the time of their event planning and slash or execution, a further 26.1% lived with others, and no data were available for the remaining cases. 40.2% were unemployed at the time of their arrest or terrorist event. Many were chronically unemployed and consistently struggled to hold any form of employment for a significant amount of time. 19.3% subjectively experienced being disrespected by others while 14.3% experienced being the victim of verbal or physical assault. It is true that one of the main reasons behind terrorism is a strong religious belief however there are other factors such as cultural, social, and political. Even though these reasons are like most around the world. The drive behind these Chechen terrorists are quite distinct and unique from others. Many of the Chechens considered themselves secular freedom fighters, nationalist insurgents seeking to establish an independent secular state of Chechnya. A distinction must be made from the beginning between national Chechen terrorists and non-Chechen fighters who have adopted the idea from abroad. Few Chechen fighters fought for the jihads although on the other hand most of the non-Chechen fighters did, Janechko, 2014.
One of the major reasons why terrorists are motivated and perhaps eager to carry out horrific acts is assurance of financial stability for their families, that they are given when they join a terrorist organization. An extra grant is provided for the families of suicide bombers. Democracy and Domestic Terrorism The relationship between domestic terrorism and democracy is very complex. Terrorism is most common in nations with intermediate political freedom, and it is least common in the most democratic nations. However, one study suggests that suicide attacks may be an exception to this general rule. Evidence regarding this particular method of terrorism reveals that every modern suicide campaign has targeted a democracy a state with a considerable degree of political freedom. The study suggests that concessions awarded to terrorists during the 1980s and 1990s for suicide attacks increased their frequency. There is a connection between the existence of civil liberties, democratic participation, and terrorism. According to Young and Dugan, these things encourage terrorist groups to organize and generate terror. Some examples of terrorism in non-democratic nations include EDA in Spain under Francisco Franco, although the group's terrorist activities increased sharply after Franco's death, the organization of Ukrainian nationalists in pre-war Poland, the Shining Path in Peru under Alberto Fujimori, the Kurdistan Workers' Party when Turkey was ruled by military leaders and the ANC in South Africa. Democracies, such as Japan, the United Kingdom, the United States, Israel, Indonesia, India, Spain, Germany, Italy, and the Philippines, have also experienced domestic terrorism. While a democratic nation espousing civil liberties may claim a sense of higher moral ground than other regimes, an act of terrorism within such a state may cause a dilemma, whether to maintain its civil liberties and thus risk being perceived as ineffective in dealing with the problem, or alternatively to restrict its civil liberties and thus risk delegitimizing its claim of supporting civil liberties. For this reason, homegrown terrorism has started to be seen as a greater threat, as stated by former CIA director Michael Hayden. This dilemma, some social theorists would conclude, may very well pl. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.